Welcome back to Porch Talk. So this is a Ken and Myra story, who were my parents. A little background. My dad grew up the child of sharecroppers who grew up themselves as child of sharecroppers. So if you don't know what a sharecropper is, those are people who don't own the farm on which they're living and working. It's owned by somebody else who will provide them, say, with the seed. And the farmer, you know, the sharecropper does all the work and at the end of the season, the owner who provided the seed gets a share of, of the profits from the crop. And so uh, my dad grew up in a very like, what I would think of as a rough existence. He worked seven days a week, didn't have shoes a lot. I've seen pictures and there's six kids and they just never had any money. And my mom grew up upper middle class to the point that when she and my dad got married, they were married at the Dallas Country Club and with all the bells and the whistles. So my parents came from two very disparate backgrounds. And when they first got married, they were living in California and Bakersfield. And my dad one day came home and he had a, a pile of, of white fabric, you know, just a big pile. And he said, Marme, he says, I've got you a job. And my mother went, do we need money? And he said, he said, I've got you a job. And he flicked out this white fabric and it was this long white thing that was a bag. <laughs> my mother goes, what is that? And he goes, I got you a job picking cotton, I'll say 50 cents a pound. And she just looked at him and she said, do we need money? And he goes, that's, that's a good price for cotton, Myra. And she goes, do we need money? Because I'm not gonna go pick cotton. If we need money, I'll go work in a department store or something. And he goes, are you too good to pick cotton? My mother and my sisters pick cotton. My grandmothers pick cotton. And she goes, Ken, I have other skills. I don't need to be picking cotton. And so he folded that bag up and he was, he was not happy, but he took the bag back to wherever he got it from. And so, you know, that was probably early fall. And then at winter, he came in and he said, my man, I've got you a job. The man does not learn. And she goes, do we need money? And he goes, this is a great job. And she goes, what is it? And he handed her something and she opens it up and it's an apron. And she goes, what is this? And he said, I got you a job selling Christmas trees on a street corner. And she just looked at him and she said, Ken, if, if we need money, I will go work in a department store or something. And, you know, I have other skills. And he was like, grumble, grumble, and took the apron and took it back to wherever he got it from. So four years goes by and they're living in Seminole, Oklahoma. And my mom, uh, it's probably 1954 or something like that. And my mother gets a job in Shawnee, Oklahoma whose only claim to fame, honestly, is that Brad Pitt was born there. <laughs> He's got relatives. And, and I was born there as well. So a few years apart. But she, my dad's gonna go to college at OU, so she gets a job in town. And she comes home, she's so excited. She tells him about this job. And she said, I applied for it, it was in the newspaper. And he goes, well, what are you gonna do? And she goes, well, it's, it's on Main Street, kind of at the end of Main Street, and, and it's got a front room with a desk and the phone. And the boss says, you know, that I, and people will come in and, and I'll just show them where the door is behind me. And I've been told if the phone rings to not answer it. And my dad goes, okay. And so two weeks go, go by and she goes to work one day and, and the door's locked. She finds this a little odd and she looks in the window and the desk is gone and the phone is just sitting on the floor and it's locked up. And so she goes home and she tells my dad that night, she goes, I think I lost my job. And he goes, why? And she told him, she goes, you know, door locked, phone on the floor. And he goes, tell me again, tell me again what you were doing. And she said, so I sit at the desk, I wave people in, the phone rings and I don't answer it. He goes, cry me, Meyer May, you were working for a bookie. She didn't even get a paycheck. She worked there for for two weeks, pointing people to the door behind him. My mother's my mother's level of naivety was pretty high. She and my dad, in in the early years, kind of after I was born, uh, they were in Las Vegas 
for some business trip and he took her down to the casino and my dad was worldly wise because he'd been a Marine and they're sitting there watching people shoot craps. They don't have any money to do it themselves. So they're just watching. And my mother nudges my dad and she goes, that's so sweet. And he goes, what? And she goes, see that, see that older gentleman over there? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, he's brought his young daughter with him. <laughs> my dad just looks at my mom and he goes, you think that's, that's his daughter? And she goes, yes, yeah. so my dad never took me anywhere. And he goes, my maid, that is not that man's daughter. And, and she goes, well, if that's not his daughter, who is it? And my dad leans over and he goes pss, 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 in her ear and she goes, a prostitute? Needless to say, <laughs> that kind of stuff just followed my mom till the rest of her life, 60s, 70s. Anybody would tell like a blue joke, which is kind of an off, off color joke or whatever. It's leave footprints on the top of my mom's head. She just, her brain just didn't work that way. So anyway, that's all for this porch talk.